Oh man, I wish somebody would do me in a good burger. Okay. But, um, yeah, Woody <coughs> Brock and the Venom symbiote are making a big comeback right now and in the Spider-Man comics. We're going to talk about that for a little while. First up is, um, let's talk because. about Ultimate Spider-Man first then. Okay. Um, just read this uh, a couple minutes ago. Very impressed by it. I, I was, I, but I, one of the things I like about what Bendis is doing, um, with this is that he's finally doing what I always thought they should have been doing with Venom. Is he's made him a monster. He's made mm -hmm. him an alien. He's made him a parasite. He's not just, uh, you know, a bag of muscles with, uh, you know, a bunch of fangs and a slobbery tongue. Like, he actually um, is, a, is a bad guy in this, and he, he's, he's a, you know, he's a monster, he eats people, he, in this one he takes a bite out of a police horse. I just think that's awesome. The, the thing about Venom is <coughs> a lot of people, uh, especially, like, people my age, because I'm much older than you are. <laughs> like 20 years like older? 20, 20, 30 years, I forget. Um, back in the Ice Age, after we killed the Mastodon, <laughs> we would read comics, and, and Venom was there. He was just being introduced, and I tell you, it, people were crazy about this character, you know, because he was the anti-Spider-Man, but that's just reading it as kids, and we got a little older, and you realize there's not a whole lot of depth in this character, a whole yeah. lot of... Not a whole lot of depth in Eddie Brock either, you know, because he's just like this muscle-bound guy, this uh, total opposite of uh, Grace Topher uh, <coughs> guy that um, would uh, would be there. And <coughs> but there was not a whole lot of depth to his character in Bendis's world, uh, the Ultimate World. The the symbiote was actually made from the DNA of uh, Peter Parker's father, so that really links. Uh, Spider-Man to uh, Venom, the Venom symbiote. Parker's realizing that that uh, part of his DNA is still infected by the symbiote. Yeah. And that's a really interesting take that they've they really done, never done before. Because mm -hmm. you know, in the past, in the real Marvel universe, it's like he, they've separated completely. And I just don't think it's clean cut like that. So. Yeah. By the way, ben ben Bendis's betrayal of Venom has been the coolest betrayal ever. Because you always heard about Venom being a cannibal, but yeah, he you, always, you actually see him being a cannibal. I remember the the little toy, um, the uh, little toys Venom symbiote that came out uh, even before the '90s Spider-Man cartoon. Had a little sound chip, and if you hit it uh, like a button on his back or something, you'd say, "I'm gonna eat your brains." And you read the comic, and he's not. In yeah, fact, he doesn't kill innocent people. It's yeah, he, he's some sort of like self-righteous, like anti-hero in the comic, which I never liked. He should be a, no. a parasite. He should be like the alien in uh, the Ridley Scott, you know, alien. He should be yeah. ferocious. And in this, yeah. you know, you could see him like his mouth is very piranha-like. Uh, it's just like a small kind of uh, almost like a sucker, like like a leech mouth or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. You know, I mean, it gets bigger and stuff, but it's not this, like, exaggerated, like, yeah, I, alligator fucking weird shit. And I have to <coughs> say, um, the Beetle is awesome in this. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes in... And, and we really don't know who he is yet. No, yeah. and he doesn't even call himself. I mean, that's just kind of like something, uh, kind of a throwaway label that Spider-Man slaps on him other, you know, mm -hmm. in battle or whatever. But he's, like... He actually has a, a role to play, and it's kind of um, it's going to be really interesting to see where he fits into all this, because um, he just turns up and uh, sort of demands a sample of venom. It's not it's not the beetle you know. Uh, it's it's a it's much it's George Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. book right now is very Resident Evil kind of like biochemistry, mm -hmm. um, kind of biohazardous weapon. Bio, yeah. Bio, I don't know. It's it's very well thought out, very well paced. Uh, which is the exact opposite of what's going on. You're talking other. about the new ways to die. Yeah, the new ways to die. The first issue, yeah, I think the, um, I think, uh, I actually, I liked the backup story a little bit better. Mark, yeah. Mark Wade yeah, that was and good. Addie Granoff. Yeah, I agree, that was a good one. That, it was, that was a good one. Eddie Brock just has a breakdown and realized that Venom's still a part of him in some way. And, um, but same thing, that's, that still happens and they allow him back into the uh, homeless shelter like it never happened. It's very strange. Um, yeah. I think Menace, uh, I, I really, the, the villains that they've been um, 
giving us with this reboot ever since the the start of Brand New Day. It's just been one kind of like uh, mediocre, you know, villain after another. Nothing really uh, makes an impression on me. Nothing that that I really think is worthy of a Spider-Man book. Um, I'm very underwhelmed at this point by uh, the last couple months of this series. Um, Menace, one of the one of the least likable characters of the reboot. Um, now they're hinting that Harry Osborn, who's magically brought back to life, and we don't even know why or how that happened, but they're hinting at him uh, probably um, might have a secret life as Menace, which um, is sort of he sort of looks like a Lord of the Rings version of Green Goblin, um, and I just think that's really fucking lame. I mean, yeah. who need you know? <coughs> well. I agree with you, and I don't agree with you at the same time. I mean, the characters do lack lack depth, but at the same time, it's kind of a uh, bring back to the Spider-Man issues of old that I used to read in like seventh grade. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of fun in a childish way, you know. But uh, it's not literature exactly literature, but like the paper doll is kind of goofy. It's all kind yeah. of goofy. It's all, it's <coughs> yeah, all it's all kind of goofy. And it's, okay, on to the second issue okay. of the arc. Um, this is fabulous Eddie Granoff um, I'm hoping I'm saying his name right uh, variant uh, cover it's a very really beautiful sweet. portrait of uh, Venom very cool looking he really does look like the Ridley Scott alien uh, if you kind of squint and everything he is that kind mm -hmm. of HR Geiger-ish type thing yeah very Geiger-esque uh, okay so second issue which is the latest part um, you, it's kind of obvious that the Thunderbolts run by uh, Norman Osborn was going to come in eventually. Venom and Green Goblin are both <coughs> part of it, you know. It's yeah. just bound to happen. That's yeah, yeah. That's just that's just a given. Um, but I don't I don't know about the whole blending of the two together because it leaves the Scorpion and and clings on to to Eddie Brock towards the end and. Um, I never liked the whole Scorpion, Mark Millar's idea that the Scorpion and, and like the new Venom was going to be Scorpion wearing the symbiote. I was like, I like those characters separately. I don't think they need to cannibalize two characters to make one a little bit cooler. And, and you know, they gave, I don't know, the, the drawing but doesn't look as good. <coughs> like the character design of the Scorpion Venom doesn't mm -hmm. look as good. He's got eyes and stuff. I don't know. It just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It's not, not that. I mean, I still liked uh, his presence in, the, in Warren Ellis' Thunderbolts. I thought he was handled very well, and I mm -hmm. thought in, the, in these co comics he's handled very well. I just didn't like, you know, it's just a minor gripe, I suppose. Yeah. Um, no, the, the problem I had, the major problem I had with that issue was um, Eddie Brock's backstory was just kind of rushed in. A lot of it didn't make sense. The, uh, like, Matt Murdock uh, defending him, you know, Spider-Man's buddy. It's kind of an arbitrary... Yeah, like, got him off the hook, saying he, he wasn't in control of himself. Because Daredevil uh, would jump to defend Venom in a heartbeat, right? Yeah, but this new anti-Venom uh, character, I just don't know what to think about that. I mean, seriously. Having a, a, a big monster that's black or whatever is almost expected. Having a big monster that's, like, pale white is just... Eerie. It just it looks very mm -hmm. unnatural. There's no pigmentation or anything. That's always creepier than seeing like, you know, just mm -hmm. dark colors. Um, I think it's a, a very effective design. I will say it's it's very effective design. Well, John Romita Jr. is uh, the art has been phenomenal. Yeah, Klaus Janssen uh, doing the inks over John Romita Jr., which to me is a dream team. Yeah, uh, very, especially very on Spider-Man. I mean, I I would like to see this suit as like more of a sentinel, like a brainless type thing that actually like anti Spider Man yeah. thing, you know. I, yeah. That that would be cool, you know? Yeah, when I saw the anti Venom design back on News Rama a couple uh, months ago I thought, well this is cool but mm -hmm. I thought the anti Venom was Spider Man. You know? Yeah. Or, or yeah. So I mean if if it became like a sentinel type thing, you know, um, with not a whole lot of brain power in itself. Eddie Brock, there's just not much to his character. I mean, there never has been. Like, yeah. Now all of a sudden <clears throat> he's a, um, a, like a skinny bald ailing man who's. I mean, he's so di like every time you see him in the comics, he's a different person. And yeah. Slot's doing a good job. I just think that his all the information's being rushed a little bit and uh, trying to throw in little things that try to make sense. I don't know if that's just the editors. Or what? Um, because I pretty much have faith in dance life.